Today's podcast is brought to you by our friends at over at itpro.tv. You can find a free free offer with itpro.tv slash ring. Yes, or links, places. Paul, uh, Paul Therat. I have to go into detox go. after a week-long visit with my alcoholic friends from Boston. Well, based on your Instagram, I thought you were going to say a detox of cheesesteaks because it that looks too. like you ate all of them. They, um, Yeah, well, they'd never been to Philly, so... There was the great cheesesteak debate. I'll just end this debate by saying I feel bad for Philly that this is all they have to their name because, you know, no offense, Philly, but, like, anyone can make a cheesesteak sandwich. Also, the most prominent sports figure in the city is a character from a movie <laughs> who was fictional and has a statue on the steps of an art museum, which, I, I mean, come on. <laughs> But uh, they're really yeah. proud of their one-and-done championship over the Patriots a few years back. Um, I'd have to go look at the tape, but I, I think the Patriots won a few more than one. But, you know, great sports town. Good history, though. Um, any any other ways you can slam <laughs> Philly while we're here? Like I can do that now. I live here. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's how that works. It's okay. I'm a Pennsylvanian, you know? I earned that right. Did you? No. <laughs> Not really. I think that's uh, one of the challenges or problems, whatever. Like, if you're a place known for a food, it's not hard to, like, make... I mean, it is, it's hard yeah. to make good food, like, consistently and at scale. That is absolutely a skill. But, like, cheesesteaks, oh. for example. Like, eh, it's cheese a cheesesteak. Anyone can make a cheese. The, the Gino's Cheesecake, Gino's being one of the famous places, mm -hmm. is a steakum, if you've ever grown up on such food. It, it's flat, frozen pieces of steak, I guess, Yeah. that you slap on a grill and they cook in, like, 30 seconds. You know, it's... it's um. Yeah, it was fine. I mean, but I, I get a decent cheesesteak at the ballpark here. I mean, I used to, you know, Boston area. We, used to, uh, I think it's still around, but D'Angelo's was like a local chain of sub shops. Awesome cheesesteak. I mean, but then again, you know, what's Boston known for? Like baked beans. I mean, come on. I would have guessed clam chowder. Yeah, no, they. Oh, I mean, there's more than that, of course, and that's yeah. why Boston is the better. Baked city. Beans. No. <laughs> come to come to Boston, get your beans. <laughs> Your beans and chowder, you'll be fine. Just make sure you're always near the toilet. <laughs> that would be a heck of a lunch, wouldn't it? Be like, what'd you uh, eat for lunch? Brutal. Beans and yeah, you'd be making that phone call into an inner sanctum because that person's not walking anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, good seafood, obviously. Although you know, for whatever it's worth, at Lehigh Valley, we're nowhere near water. Awesome seafood here. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think they've uh, logistics. I think have been figured out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, uh, Stadia, I. I know. I read Every time headline. you see anything about Stadia, it's like, hmm. I read your headline, which Paul Throut's headline is, Google makes Stadia more attractive to developers, to which my tweet sure. response was, by killing it. <laughs> was, so, I briefly toyed with this headline. <laughs> Let me just read exactly there. Google makes Stadia more attractive to developers, comma, a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, see. Um, but, I, you know, look, I, 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 I have to say, for all of the doom and gloom and, and the reasonable expectations that Google, Google will kill this based on their prior history, um, you know, they do kind of continually provide updates and improvements mm -hmm. and uh, expand it to more clients. They've uh, improved the technical capabilities. I, I still think they're kind of uh, right at the leading edge of this stuff right yeah. now uh, compared to Luna or, uh, X, or uh, Xbox, what's it called, cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't get a lot of love, you know. But honestly, it's a good service. And the changes they made, which are, you know, financial changes with regards to uh, sales through the Stadia store. And then uh, I, th I think this is random. I don't think there's a comparable to this. But um, developers who target Stadia and have games played through Stadia will get engagement-based payments um, that represent the vast majority of the revenue from that Stadia Pro subscription. I, I have to look it up. I think it's 70. I want to see. Yeah, 70 percent. So, I, you know, this I, that's the equivalent of, I guess, a, a stream on Spotify, and we know that those developers don't get a lot of money. But 70% of Stadia, Stadia Pro, what must be, what, $9.99 a month? 70% mm -hmm. uh, uh, of that, so $7 of that will go to, in, in our percentage basis on, you know, the game to the makers of the games that those people play. Yeah. That's, I mean, that sounds good to me. I mean, that's... It's never been the technology. Nobody's ever, I mean, there were maybe some questions at some point, but Google has good tech for this stuff. Yeah. The problem is yeah. that the service just isn't a compelling offering compared to 
existing platforms yet. And the question is, will Google last longer than the yet part? Yeah, I mean, the, the two extremes here are mobile platforms that have a billion games uh, of all ca mostly casual nature that people can play in line or in commuting and blah, blah, blah. And then the really hardcore dedicated stuff, which is still dominated by PCs and consoles. And <clears throat> state is kind of in the middle. You know, it's it has some of those really good games. Uh, it has probably some casual games, not the same things you see at mobile, I guess. Um, requires an internet connection, obviously. I know, you know. But even in my little meanderings around eastern Pennsylvania recently, there were times where I'm like, I don't, I don't have a connection here for some reason, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So I guess it depends on your situation. I, I don't know what that audience is. I don't know what you call that. I mean, mainstream on one end. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Unless they've solved that underwater problem. Um, maybe they have. Maybe they're mm. using whale sonar for all I know. Anyway. Whale <laughs> sonar. Yes, Stadia, powered by whale sonar. That's like a good ring. <laughs> you never know. Um it's a good service. I, 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 it's unclear. Like I said, who it targets. You know, mm -hmm. of course they've left all. They've lost all the key personnel. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You can. It's it's one of those things. Like I, it's. I feel like they. I think they should keep it. I I I I feel like it could succeed. I don't know. Not maybe to the level of Xbox or PlayStation, but. Yeah. No. I don't know. Other things happening. Phil Spencer did an interview with The Guardian, and one of the more interesting tidbits, there, there's a couple of ways this is interesting, at least to me, is he wants to expand the Xbox Early Access program. Now, technically, Google, or Google, Microsoft has this already for Xbox, like a preview program, but in Phil Spencer's own words, it's very, very, very small. Uh, one of the challenges, which isn't explicitly mentioned in, in his interview, is that early access games, which are really popular on Steam, are obviously unfinished alpha crash a whole lot to right. put that type of a game <laughs> or product onto a locked ecosystem like a console is kind of risky in some regards because it's one it's unstable they don't want to open it up to additional potential hacks or i don't know if they you could hack it through the game or whatever but it's not as lucrative as just running it on a pc but now that microsoft has this fancy dancy cloud streaming stuff you could think and imagine a scenario where they have an early access program that you, just, you just stream it only and you can get feedback and do all sorts of stuff through their streaming platform and not open up the platforms to potential issues with unstable games. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this doesn't happen every single time, but a lot of times when we get access to like say Microsoft studio games early through like an early access thing, those games can't be upgraded to the final thing. And you, so you, you download this, multi gigabyte mm -hmm. thing to your hard drive you play it <clears throat> hopefully and then if you want to get the final version you actually have to it's like another thing like another app almost kind of like when you do <clears throat> like an early access call of duty beta and it's a couple of multiplayer yep. levels blah 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 that's not the game like they're not you're not going to upgrade that to call of duty you have to get rid of that <clears throat> so yeah no that that solves the problem nicely right there yeah so um other things paul that can solve your problem if you're thinking that Windows 11 is going to let me change this. There we go. If you're thinking you don't have enough skills in the IT Pro department, ITPro.tv is a skills development platform. You can upskill yourself. They have hundreds of hours of content that feels more like a conversation and less like just being yelled at and taught. Um, it's a really interactive way to learn and upskill yourself, especially as we move into a hybrid world. They have plenty of sessions and classrooms and technologies and anything else you want to learn about and to upskill your IT Pro skills. You can go over to ITPro.tv dot tv slash ring for a offer exclusive to first ring daily members or listeners i should say 5800 plus hours of training i have a question do you it looks like you moved that logo over so your big head wouldn't be blocking it did you actually make that change i did that's good look at this sure. look look how professional i am now paul look so you can see oh, yeah. it does it there is i tried to match the similar gray so we don't get that blast uh, of a yeah. camera like that does yeah yeah that's a little fade because mm -hmm. the i because the white balance changes and that's how much professional i am paul big head here I mean, bigger I, logo a better there. solution might have been put in the screen in front of your face too much <laughs> i don't know that's what i work with everyday people try to design. make positive changes and you just just knocks you down not really but <laughs> firefox 90s out for firefox 90 fans yeah, 
this this one, you know, obviously they just they just did the big uh, UI change. So there's there's nothing major in this one. There's some uh, it's kind of an interesting improvement to their private browsing functionality, which I think is just called smart browsing probably or whatever. But you know, they block trackers and whatnot. But I guess one of the pro one of the things they were missing was if you were using a third party or if a site was using a third party uh, Facebook login plugin that would actually bypass that and Facebook could track you through that, which is crazy. But anyway, they've solved that problem. So you can have a cake and eat it too, as they say. And France solved its problem by finding Google. And uh, yeah, that's going to be an ongoing drama. Yeah. This is just, you know, countries are all going to be rallying to, for the best possible position for their publishing companies now because mm -hmm. Google, what, last year caved to Australia first. You know, remember there's like, yep. yeah, might just cut off Google search in Australia, see how that teaches them. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, okay, we cave. <laughs> you know, so now every country in Europe, especially to start, is like, um, yeah, we like the money too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. As much as we like to see you stealing our content. Uh, it's relatable. Yeah. That's, that's Google's the... Google's careening toward becoming a public utility. I I don't. <laughs> I, no, I mean they, I just yeah. they have so many uh, antitrust concerns. Like mm -hmm. it's crazy. Like as strongly as I feel about Apple and how terrible they are, I mean I think uh, inarguably Google's the bigger problem because of what they do. You know, right? The reach that they have uh, cross platform, uh, every device imaginable, the sheer necessity of some of their services like search and maps, and uh, just this horrible background tracking that. You know, they built into Chrome for the desktop and Android for mobile. I mean, I, I don't know. I This is um, a concern. Well, to put it into some perspective for people who may not necessarily, I mean, people get why. Uh, but I spend probably two to three hours every week looking at our SEO for our sites and trying to make sure that we are on the right path. Nick and I have a standing meeting every single week because if Google just one day decides that Petri or Therat isn't good enough to be on page one, it could quite literally collapse the business tomorrow. If we wake up and Google yep. says, you know what, your oh. sites suck, you're done. Yeah. yeah. On that note, let me just point out that Google is the best company on earth and we love them. And mm -hmm. uh, everything I just said before is complete nonsense. You should let them track you. It's it's all fine. Yeah. Did that help? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if it, if it boosts us up or if Google kicks you There's out of like, Google News. Like it's... Um, <laughs> For yeah. companies that depend on search, Google is the gatekeeper of your business, and they can comp imagine. Yes. Imagine if you went to Google, like behind closed doors, and said, "You know what? For a million bucks, give me just 10, 10 search results that I'm number one." It would overnight change your business. If you haven't done it, you should read that recent book about Amazon and Jeff Bezos. I forget the name of it. I'm, I'm sorry, but the it was written by a guy who had written a previous book about Brad that something or other um, at Bloomberg. <laughs> that I think Bradstone, maybe Bradstone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some, maybe. And um, it's excellent. And but among the many things in this book that are fa and it, it's just chapter chapter. It's every time you like, oh my god, I'm like you know it's it's fascinating. But one of the big changes at Amazon over the past you know five or years or so that hasn't gotten a lot of press is they've allowed advertising into their site, which is crazy when you think about it because they sell stuff you know whatever. But mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos had to be really um, convinced that this was something that they could do without ruining the user experience and blah 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 whatever. So now when you look for things on Amazon, you get like sponsored results and all that stuff. And of course, they, I'm sure their results are as artificial as Google's. They can promote stuff that they want to, et cetera. But, you know, the, the effect, and this is something I saw recently. I might have told this story already, but I was, my NAS had a red light on it, and I looked it up, and it was like one of the bays was, I thought the drive was bad. So I looked up like how much it would have cost to replace the, I think it's a six terabyte drive, because it does mm -hmm. some kind of a rate zero, probably, whatever. And, um, I looked on Amazon, and it was like 150 bucks, and I was like, okay, and I'm like, let me just play around with this. I saw ads for this very, it's very specific. It's like a, a NAS specific WD drive. Hmm. I've seen ads, for, I, not now I don't, but what, at the time I saw ads for the next five, seven days everywhere, like on the internet. And it's like, this is the the side effect of Amazon getting into ads, you know? And it's like, Jesus, uh, like it's just, just bad. And by the way, the drive's fine. I eventually finally just, signed into the console and it's like you just need to balance the drives you click a button it's like Zoom, it's fine <laughs> drives healthy so i didn't have to spend any money yeah but i did have to get those stupid ads because you know that's our world it is the world that we live in um speaking of the world that we live in later today depending on when you listen to this microsoft will be hosting their inspire conference which there will be some information coming out which will be discussed tomorrow but yes. for now 
Yes, yes, yes. But for now, you should head on over to itpro.tv. Go to itpro.tv slash ring. You can find links in the descriptions. And we'll catch all of you right back here tomorrow. Tomorrow.